Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Schrader. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist working in ASU counseling at the Tempe campus. My name is Rachel Bahadur and I'm the Associate Director and Clinical Director um, with ASU Counseling Services. So identity development is part of our lifespan as human beings. And, and so for students who are uh, gender or sexual minorities, um, it's also a time of tremendous growth of finding out who they are and what their identities are. And um, it's a process of exploration as well. Um, there are different models for identity development um, and in all these different models there are different stages um, and so in those stages it can range from identity confusion to identity acceptance um, and then there's a range of stages in between that um, and so students can move through these changes in different orders um, they might skip stages they might return back to stages throughout their life the process of identity development and acceptance is a process and so um, as a student comes out to a parent or a friend they're starting that new person on their journey of acceptance and it takes time what's really important when a student comes out to a family member or parent is that they are letting them know that they trust them and that they want to include them in their life and so to recognize that this is a part of who your child is and being able to be supportive of your child is really crucial. So as a family member of an LGBTQIA student, um, it is best to support your Sun Devil during this stressful time um, by encouraging them to identify and talk about their thoughts and feelings with a trusted friend, family member, faculty, or staff. Part of what can be helpful for students, um, transgender students in particular, is being able to use the proper pronouns and the names that the students have chosen for themselves. And sometimes for older people, it takes a while to catch up. But what's important to know is that you're making the effort. Um, the one that is most well known and inter is international is called PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. And it really is there to help parents adjust and understand um, to their, their students' identities as sexual or gender min minorities that way. Locally in Phoenix, we have um, a couple of groups. There's one called One in 10. There's an organization called Trans Spectrum. Um, right now we have an LGBTQIA virtual support circle. Um, this support circle uh, creates a platform for students to be heard, um, a sense of community and connection. Um, they can talk to other students who may be having the same uh, concerns, issues, um, challenges um, that they are. On campus, there's a really good resource that's kind of one-stop shopping that's called Out at ASU. Um, you just go to that website and, and it lists all the various student organizations. Um, we do have the Rainbow Coalition. The Rainbow Coalition actually um, is an umbrella organization um, that has all the clubs and organizations under them. Resiliency for any human being is a really important factor. Resilience, right, the definition of that is the capacity to be able to recover from a difficult uh, or tough situation. For students who are sexual and gender minorities, um, a lot of times the outside world is not a very welcoming place. LGBTQIA students um, participating in academics and also working um, to find their identity can be super stressful. And so ASU is a very welcoming and inclusive community that way. So helping our students be resilient really is um, helping them get the support that they need, um, get the resources that they need, and um, to help them be successful with their careers and, and to graduate. So what I I know about LGBTQ students is that uh, despite all of these experiences, um, they do rise up, um, they overcome, um, they use these opportunities to exercise resiliency in their lives.